Today in our 2017 Chevrolet Silverado 2500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you an installed and draw tight front mount trailer hitch receiver. That's so what our hitch looks like when it's installed. As you can see, the cross tube is completely hidden behind the bumper fascia. The only thing here we can see is going to be our receiver tube. This front mount hitch is going to have a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. It's going to have a reinforced collar to give it a little extra stability on the receiver tube. Hitch pin hole, which is this hole here, is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. It takes a standard 5 8 hitch pin and clip. It does not come with a hitch, however, it can be found here at eTrailer.com. This hole here is for a J pin stabilization device only. And what that does is it takes the shake and play out of any of your hitch mount accessories you may need or may use. This hitch is going to have a nice black powder coat finish that's going to resist any rust or corrosion. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 500 pound max tongue weight, which is the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube, and a 9,000 pound straight line pull, which is straight off the hitch. Now I always recommend checking the owner's meal to make sure the front axle can handle that amount of weight. You always want to go with the lowest number between the gross front axle weight of the vehicle and the hitch. This hitch is going to work great for any of your front mounted hitch accessories you may need. Cargo carriers, spare tire holder, uh, even plows or winches. Now let's give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any hitch mount accessories you may need. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube, it's going to be about 17 inches. Now let's show you how to get this installed. We need to have our vehicle on level ground. Then we're going to measure to the center of our tow hook, which is where our bolt runs through. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that right here to the center of our plate. Once we find that mark, we're going to come down or subtract three and five eighths. And the mark is going to be right here. So from that dot, we're going to measure up three and a quarter. That will be the top of our cutout. And then from the center, we're going to measure out each side an inch and five eighths. So you can see what I did. I made the square with some tape. I double checked my measurements, which I suggest doing because I had to move mine just a little bit. Once I looked at it again, it looked like I was off one way just a little bit more than the other. I just remeasured, got my square, uh, used the tape to draw my square. And that's what I'll be cutting out. Now our directions don't tell us to take off our license plate holder here. Uh, they are riveted in. The problem is our fascia behind it, our hitch has to come through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in each corner of this. We're going to go all the way through the fascia. So when we take this off, it's going to give us our square in our fascia where we need to cut out. So if you notice how our fascia kind of dips down right here, when you're doing this bottom row, when you get this in, you're going to feel it kind of move. Pull it back out, hold it steady so you can get a straight hole in. If you don't, you're going to go off to the side or it's going to go up or way down low. To get our license plate holder removed, I'm actually going to drill out the center of each rivet. What I did is I just taped off my square again and take my Dremel tool and I'll cut right along the line. Now we can take a utility knife and we'll clean up all of our burrs. Next, we're going to have two bolts we need to remove on each side of the vehicle. One is going to be this bottom one. The other one is this one here holding your tow hook in place. This will be reinstalled. We just need to take it out to get our hitch into place. Use an 18 millimeter socket to remove both of those. The top one is going to have a nut on one side. It's going to be a bolt that goes all the way through the frame rail and has a nut on the other side. This one just bolts up through the bottom of the tow hook. Once you get your lower bolt out, slide your top one out. I'm actually just going to leave my tow hook to sit there. And if you don't feel comfortable with it sitting there, you pull it out just stick it back in when you throw your hitch up. I'm going to take a carriage bolt, spacer block, pull wire. We're going to thread on our bolt and spacer block onto our pull wire. We're going to go up through this large hole. Bolt first, 
in the spacer block. I'm gonna pull it back down like that. You're gonna do that same thing on the other side. In our instructions, it tells us to lift it straight up into position, except we can't do that. There's a metal bracket on the back of our fascia. Uh, there's a bar that runs right across here, and it's hard to get our uh, hitch to go in and up with this bracket. It's kind of hard to flex it. What I'm going to try to do, I'm going to move this first so I don't damage it. And I'll just pop the uh, plastic clips off. I'm going to get it up out of the way. Just kind of stick it up here somewhere so we don't pinch it when we get our hitch in. I'm going to try and get my wedge my hitch in so I can get it into place. Uh, we'll have to see where, where we can go. There's not a whole lot of movement here, so let's try and see what we can do. There we go. So like that. Get our pull wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. Get our bolts pulled down like that. If you find your bolt goes up into the hole, pull your pull your uh, tow hook out and you can reach inside that frame rail. What it is, is this bar that runs across here goes all the way through there and that bolt might get stuck underneath of it. You can just reach up there and grab it. Slide your tow hook back into place. We're gonna put our small bolt in and the small bolt is gonna go through the bottom into this little hole. So you need to line up that hole with this front hole on the hitch. And then go ahead and put the same one in on the other side. And if you notice, our hitch is not sitting flat. Even though we don't have it tight, uh, completely tight, our hitch isn't sitting flat and I can't push it up anymore. Well, what it is, is I need to come down just a little bit more right here because the bottom of our hitch is pushing down and the top of it's pushing up on the top of it. So I'm gonna trim this out just a little bit more down here and it should allow the the tongue of my hitch to, or the receiver side of my hitch to fall down, bringing the back of it up. Remove your pull wire. Then we're gonna put on conical tooth washer and make sure the teeth are facing up towards the hitch. And then done. And then we're gonna take our bolt that we removed at the beginning. Once you get your bolt in, you want to make sure you're going from the inside out and you want to go through your tow hook. Next, we're going to tighten and torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. And as far as our wiring, you can see it's kind of tight there on our plug. We're not going to be able to get it on. So I'm going to take a long zip tie. I'm going to zip tie it right to my hitch. Keep it from bouncing around, causing damage to it. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the draw tight front mount trailer hitch receiver on our 2017 Chevy Silverado 2500.